And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Sunday, September 25th, 2022. I am going to begin right here on the hourly chart. The big picture does not need to be updated. We're really going to just focus on the hourly chart and on down <clears throat> from there. <coughs> so to review real quick, we are in a larger primary degree C wave down. That remains still in place. And within that, there'll be five waves of intermediate degree. And those I've labeled in yellow. And so they're a little bit larger or the largest right now on the screen. So we have intermediate one, intermediate wave two. That puts us in an intermediate third wave going down. What will be inside that intermediate third wave will be five waves of minor degree. Now the, the catch uh, last week was that we were continuing to look for this to kick in and really start to move the market. And it did basically on Wednesday, but then again, it wasn't strong enough. We were looking for a much larger break to start. Also, what I went over on uh, midweek last week, starting I believe on Wednesday, was the fact that, the, that this intermediate third wave was subdividing multiple times, which unfortunately does present us with a view that is like, well, it's not moving fast enough. And when we're getting these little bumps and grinds within the marketplace and the subdivisions, it's because there's a part of the market that's not agreeing with the fact that the that uh, what's happening, why the sellers are willing to sell, uh, doesn't fit their picture. And understandably, that because, and I do say often, that the markets are quantitative. And that means they're, they're computer driven, they're algorithmically driven. And that makes them more tradable on a technical level or according to the numbers level. And that still remains pretty much in place today. But there are situations in the economy, fundamentally, globally, geopolitically, however, we, wherever we want to draw it from, that are happening now that force a different version of what those numbers should produce or suggest. So again, we get very strong into an over, here we are on the hourly, coming right down here on the RSI. Basically, it was telling us, you better start buying it because we're going to bottom and we're going to zip straight out of it. Well, that is what happened. So, but if you were trading on an hourly basis, then yes, you could get in on those lows and then you participated after hours or into that last hour on Friday and the market just kind of popped and you made some a very decent money. But in terms of producing a narrative that's going to be acceptable to people that are more, uh, a little bit longer term investors, they're looking for a bottom. They're looking for to get in. They want to make the big money. They want to start buying things back because they don't make adjustments to the sell side. They just keep buying. So on that basis, they're looking for a much stronger low. And now they get they get some reinforcements by the market being cyclically pulling into a low, whether that happened on Friday or whether it's still yet to be happened. The market's going to let us know. What will change in terms of the other reasons that, particularly right now, inflation, recession, higher interest rates, all of those are headline news now. And what the Fed is attempting to do, et cetera, et cetera. So how do we then want to apply that into here? What I always attempt to do, I don't ignore it because we have to pay attention to it. We have to know what's happening around us because we are or participant within our own economy here in the United States and local economies, et cetera, et cetera. So problems that happen all over will eventually roll down and fall into our lap, and they are. Now, what does that all mean for moving forward? I always lay out what I believe is the wave count, and I allow the market to tell me if I'm wrong or is it something else. And thus far, I continue to hold but remember what I had mentioned as well, that I had said on Thursday that we'll likely get our answer very quickly. And I thought it would come by Friday. And sure enough, it did. And it came in the way of follow through on all of the one, two, one, two, one, twos. So let's just review that part. 
because that's what's going to be important now, I believe, in us moving forward within the structure and what we could likely still get before we actually drop into a much stronger, more sustained rally phase. We're going to stair step our way down. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to present itself in such a fashion that everyone's going to be believed that was it. That was the bottom. We got to get in. That's the bottom. We're going to get in. Every time we reach a low, they're going to want to jump and take it. That's certainly got to be the bottom now because that's that's the third time we've come down here. That's the fourth little new low that we've made. And now I'm going to explain how that's all going to unfold the way that it's looking right now. So here we are in the S&P. There's intermediate one, intermediate two, minor one, minor two. So now we're in a minor third wave down. What's inside? Five waves of minute degree. There's minute one, minute two. Okay, now we're in minute three going down. What's inside there? Five waves of sub minute degree. What do we have? One, two, three on a sub. This is a fourth wave. Now, we did kind of gap lower initially, but now suddenly we're we're going back into the green. We're okay. We're going to move it up. But it fits. It fits in the pattern and it fits in the count that we have a continuing small fourth wave. Now, I'm going to open this up even more because I want to show. I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down to my 15-minute chart. Let's get inside this so we can see what essentially is going to be unfolding. Again, I'm going to go back to that 30-minute chart. Now, what we can see here is right here, there's the three, sub-minute wave three. We're in a sub-minute wave four. If anything, I can run fibs from there to there, retracements, but I'm going to go basic on this and then what we have in terms of fib re, uh, support and resistance now as well. So possibly we can get back above to 37, 27, 28, or if we're looking here, that's 36, 59, 37, 4, that's 14 plus 31. So we're looking for 45 points off of this low, approximately. So we have 35, 86, 40 is 37, 27, 38, right in there. So it does fit. An ABC up, we get back up to that resistance zone. We, we play around the 50s for a while. We eventually break through. That provides some more buyers to move in. They come in tomorrow like because we've already hit the lows or overnight. But I would suspect we get a four. We come back down then. I'm going to go back out to the hourly chart. So we looked at that. It's an ABC. That's what we're looking for. That's likely just going to happen overnight. And when it does, maybe then we're already going to be heading down to put in the minute sub minute wave five. Now that I still expect that we're going to get this minute three down here at 3602. That just happens to be at the same level where the minor third would be equal in length to the minor wave one. Now, again, we get a lot of ones and twos and everything going in because we're working through a C wave. C waves are always fives and they'll follow through all the way down. So in other words, if we're in uh, intermediate wave one, it's going to have five waves. And we're in intermediate wave three, it's going to have five waves of minor degree. And they are building blocks. So we can continue to go down and down until we're at a sub-minute level like we are now. I normally don't try to count too much below that, but the pattern itself will continue to repeat until that wave and that move is done. Then we'll come down and finish the next move. And when that's done, in terms of putting in another if we're looking for the this, we're looking for the completion point, folks, of the minute wave three. And if I'm looking for minute wave three to end somewhere down in here, if I'm looking for minor three to end here, minute three's got to end here. We get a four and then a five to come down and finish the minute three. And then we do a, a minute four and five to finish the minor three. Minor three can finish there or it can drop below. 3,600. But I am looking for lower levels before an immediate wave two is complete. Now, I'm not going to add again the, the FIB extensions because then we got too many. We got too much support resistance all moving in, the, in different levels. But what you would do is you would go back out and at the high, all the way up there, you're going to run it 
which is basically for minor three. We're going to do it again, going up to get intermediate three. So, and again, I believe intermediate three. In fact, I'll do it so that we just have it in mind. Ultimately, what am I looking for? Or what are we looking for on the way down? Go back to the hourly chart. Now, pulling it together. Here is the intermediate third wave. Intermediate thirds against the first because of the size. The degree pushes it up bigger. And it quite often on this higher degree, we're going to be seeing that it's going to do more than 100%. We've already surpassed 100%, where intermediate wave three would be equal to intermediate wave one. We're already past that. That brings us down into this level, these levels. 1.236, 1 1.382, 1.618. That's the next most popular. First, second, the third. Well, the third we wouldn't even look for because of how deep we were looking for it to go. So once we start to get this move going, I am looking for at least 3602. I'm looking for 3476, 75 ultimately for the completion point of intermediate wave three. Then we get an intermediate wave four and intermediate wave five. And then we're back out to the daily looking to the completion point of primary wave C. So we really are moving along on this, folks. We're not hanging out. It does seem like it's taken forever and I don't disagree. But it's real important now that we, what, instead of having to come in with 100% certainty of where we think the market's going to go, we've got to continue to let the market tell us. And there, are, and the market basically was already telling us, well, there's a little bit of confusion about what we should be doing here. Do we go up? Do we go down? Who do we follow? Do we follow the Fed or do we follow the technicals? And I agree. It does prevent a little bit of like, hmm, what's going on? Stick with the count. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to let the count continue to work, work its way out. That's what I'm going to do. Because once this kicked in, folks, we all were there. We saw it. It just went. Thursday and then Friday just went. There was no second guessing. And we watched a lot of the stocks. Now, the rally coming out of that, yes, I was not surprised. The last hour particularly in Apple and a lot of these bigger stocks, there was just too much on the line to let it close lower. And they didn't. And that's fine. We don't, we can't control that and they do and that's fine. It doesn't suggest bullishness. It doesn't suggest bearishness. It was the number and it was what was sitting at that strike price. Now back to the S&P. For tomorrow, uh, depending on what actually happens all overnight. So again, what I'm looking for right now is the possibility we're going to sit and run back up to 37.28 to 37.30, 31. We do have a little pocket right there. We got the 20 at 37.24. We've got, and that's the hourly, the hourly 20. Then we have the resistance, 618 resistance at uh, 37. What is that line? Oh, that's a 26. So we have 24, 26. That's a 20 and the uh, Fib resistance. And then we have additional Fib resistance a little bit further out. That's at 37, 31. Now that's pretty much what I would think we could come in. And that is actually where this, that's the A wave, the C, the B wave, and the C wave would equal the A wave up here at this level. So it's about another 20, 20 points from where we are. We have uh, Asian markets to open, then we have the European markets to open. They've got a lot to digest. There's a lot going on around the globe. And it all has to do with inflation and recessions. It's not just us. We aren't alone in this. It is a global problem right now. So I still think that we have still additional downside. But once we reach that, I'd be looking for to put a four on that, a sub minute wave four. We come down one more time, put in a new low, uh, hopefully right here towards that 3,600 area, which is already pegged for support. And then we're putting in the sub minute wave five, 
and the minute wave three. Then we do a minute four. Remember also last week, folks, what I talked about, stair-stepping our way down. So when we got one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, well, you got a three, four, five of three, four, five of three, four, five of three. Stair-stepping. Fourth wave rally, fifth wave correct, coming back down. Fourth wave rally, fifth wave coming back down. And as you go up a degree, they will increase in size. Just because it's a higher degree. So minute's going to be bigger than the sub-minute. The minor should be bigger than the minute. minute. And the intermediate should be bigger than the minor to get us all the way down to put an intermediate wave three and then do an intermediate wave four and a finishing fifth. That I think can take us all the way through October, but we're knocking on that door now. So it's not like this is like a massive, you know, amount. And again, we should be ending up back down below. And finally, I did hear somebody else talk about the March, 2020 lows as a target. And whether that happens, it should happen for primary wave C. And the one that, that as, as we're counting it, as I'm working this through, it should end up down there. And that's a kind of a big window. We're not that actual, the March 2020 low, but we have that previous fourth, which that March 20, or, you know, the, that as soon as the pandemic low, basically. When, when when COVID hit and the uncertainty and the being shut down and not being able to work, boy, everything just kind of tipped and went right over the cliff. That would be, that entire move down is the price territory of the previous fourth. But I'm then looking for that to be, and this is the big picture I'm talking, a cycle wave A and one cycle wave A is done and in, which is what we're working on now. We're just breaking it down through all of the different degrees to get to that low and put that cycle wave A, which will produce a much stronger, more sustained rally phase. That's the one everybody's trying to catch now. But there's too much outside force with reason, with purpose for the market to go down. I, if we're really going to consider, well, we got to buy it, we're oversold. What if that's the purpose? You may have to come up with a better thought. Not, and I, not, not thought, a better reason. Yes, this is what we would normally consider, but the market is bouncing off of a low. But there's enough pressure from the sell side that it won't be able to fight its way through the numbers that want to get out. So that's the situation. And trust me, we've now got a buildup across the board of tons of media. Everybody's got their, their two cents worth. Everybody wants to talk about how maybe something is way overboard, whatever. But the reality is this is what's happening. Now, so tomorrow, I think we get ourselves up there, whether it happens overnight in the Globex session. If it does, and we can count it as complete, I'd be looking for a low below Friday's low at least, which is 36.63. Uh, let me get the right one. That is 36.60, excuse me. So below 36.60 to put in the sub-minute wave five and the minute wave three. Then guess what? We get another rally. So if they do all of that overnight, well, then yes, we'll know what to expect. We don't get to participate, that's okay. Pick it up where it is, realize what comes next, participate. All right, I'm gonna go over to the NASDAQ now, which basically, I remember I said that the NASDAQ's gonna catch up. I believe that it is. So let me open this. Now we're gonna go right into this move, right? So we're looking at the minor third coming off. Same count all the way in agreement, both markets, S&P and the NASI. They started to separate pretty much right in here. But here we are. Now, 
still people, are, if, we, if we really can in one market, still consider, is it really coming off and still this wave one? I can't deny that it's saying no. But what does start to fall back, is it truly just a diagonal which is going to put in a fifth wave to complete that B wave down, right? The intermediate B wave down that's going to allow us to rise in a intermediate C wave to complete that larger B, primary B. That is out there, but it's again now dropping down in uh, probability. The market is the one that's telling us, folks. So we will continue to monitor. There are levels that would need to be broken if it is. But in the meantime, I'm trading day to day. Now, here we are. One, two. Let me just, I'm sorry. Let me just pull this out again. Intermediate one, intermediate two, minor one, minor two, minute one, minute two, sub minute one, sub minute two. Okay, so how do we want to deal? And let's, okay, come on, folks. Auto, let's put, there you go. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So what do we got to do? We got a three, four, five of three, four, five of three, four, five of three. So stair stepping, same deal. So this is where the S&P, excuse me, this is where the NASDAQ caught up to the S&P. S&P's counting minutes within the third. So it's the NASDAQ. So we have the minute one, minute two, and then we're looking for this four. And I think we also had the same deal. And if I just do 225 up to 395, we got um, 170. From here, puts us up to 14. I think that's not going to get all the way up to 1480. Am I wrong on that? 12,000. 11,225. That's where I am looking at 11,225. And I'm going to put add that, track that 11,225. So 225 is 176 or 175. 175 points under this is 1485. Do I think it can get up to 1485? Yeah, it could quite a little bit of a rally uh, but I think what we got in between is the and again remember it's just a sub minute wave four and we still got to fight wave five down but they tend to get more excited in in the NASI. right now we do have resistance up here at 14 on 14 11,400 then we have the hourly 20 at 11,421 we've got resistance at 11,431. But it could slip and come back up and get as high as 11,475 and still be a small fourth wave and still take us down, get us below 12,002. Um, this guy is 229. And on down to next support, which actually right now is where minute three would be equal to minute one. At eleven thousand two hundred five, I think we I think we go past that a little bit, but it might if we can get sub, bring it down to here, and that finishes the minute three. We do a minute four, minute five, and now we're beginning to head down into the zone where I think we should be finding some completion points. Right again, the minor three. We're looking for like ten thousand nine twenty four for the minor three. Do a minor four, and yet another one to bring us down towards uh, 10,840. And even, actually, yeah, I'd have to go back. Let me go back out here and put this on here. Yep, got it. I want to take a look at the um, intermediate third. That intermediate third is going to be these outsides. So these are the minor, minute. And here we have where intermediate three would be equal to intermediate wave one. And that's coming in at 11,185. But I had anticipated that we could get as low as 10,060. 
on the intermediate third. That still stands. And then if we're looking for where primary C can come in, then we're going back out again to the daily and we're looking at A and the B and the C. So this would be the A and the B. So you got to go all the way back up to the high. You come all the way down to where the A wave finished, back up to here. And now you're looking at for what C wave should do. So again, we're looking at a C wave bringing us down to 100% would be 8,000. And that's where primary wave C would be equal to like the primary wave A, 8,041. How could that all fit? It can. We're edging closer to recession. We're edging closer to the interest rates continuing to go high. We're now going to be moving into to find out how has all this inflation, supply chain, all of these different things, what now is it affecting and how is that going to play out? That's going to be reality. Regardless of what the technical picture is telling us, the reality is when we stop, we do not or we fail to pay attention what the company's numbers are telling us and what the CEOs and the CFOs and all the people that are reporting to us tell us about what they anticipate, just like Ford did. Ford anticipates a very large hit to earnings because their costs have increased. What's going to be the result of that? Well, one thing would be is that the market, being us the consumer, will have to bear the brunt of paying more for what we want. You want a new car? It's going to cost you more. Why? Because their cost was higher and they still have a profit margin that they need to adhere to. Same thing coming off. Apple, Amazon, Boeing, Google, all of them, all of them are going to have that same deal. So it's going to be very important as we move into earnings as to what exactly, what exactly are they going to tell us? Everything's rosy. We're just, we're running on 110 cylinders and we're just like pumping money. We're just making, 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 and it does not cost us anything. I don't think so. Apple has warned about that they're going to have to start laying people off. This is going to be helping out that we don't fall into a recession, even though it's likely we will. So anyway, I'm just no joking here, but I'm just trying to like a submit some levity, but two realize we're at that point in our our market where reality and expectations need to meet up and agree, and that's how we're going to finish all these waves. So I need to start ticking some of this off so that it's not going to be so confusing. And so now we just have the, the three. And I'm going to take this guy off, and we'll go from there. So in any case, I'm looking for the market to kind of go finish, finish the four, come back down in the five, go back up in another four, come back down in a five. And, I've, and we have our levels. So that's where I'm going to keep it. Have a great trading day tomorrow. I uh, should continue to keep interesting. And our next update will be on Monday, September the 26th.